the topic under discussion today is MEBSs or ME biases. Let's continue our discussion. Before I get right into the discussion, I would love to tell you people about the very points that are going to help us understand this topic in a very easy way. Now, what are the points? The very first point will be what is MEBSs? Second point will be what is the next name of the MEBSs? Third point will be the difference between dysentery and diarrhea. And the fourth point will be the cause. What is the main cause of MEBSs? And the fifth point, we'll be discussing how this MEBSs is caused. So let's get started from the very first point. What is MEBSs? In a very simple way, in one line, one can say that MEBSs is the intestinal tract infection. An intestinal tract infection is actually called as MEBSS. More specifically, this is actually the infection of the large intestine. Now, let's come towards the next point. It is also called as amoebic dysentery. What? Amoebic dysentery. Now, here we go the term dysentery. One must know a little bit about diarrhea also. Let's compare these two together in a very simple and short way. When the stool is passing in a liquid way, means when a person is having a loose motion and that liquid is moving very frequently and if that stool contains blood and mucus then that is named as dysentery what dysentery and if the stool is passing through in a frequent way means in liquid form loose motion is happening to a person then that condition is known as diarrhea in diarrhea we have stools in a very frequent way loose motion and whereas in the dysentery we have the loose motion but including that there is blood and mucus also seen and that's it about the dysentery and diarrhea now let's come towards the cause what is the main cause of the amoebiasis we have protozoans named as intamoeba histolytica very prominent cause for the amoebic dysentery remember we do have some bacteria that are responsible to cause dysentery that is not amoebic dysentery that is bacterial dysentery okay we are not going to consult that side so you must keep in mind that the both are responsible whether it is protozoa or bacteria both are responsible to cause dysentery now this is not going to be the bacterial dysentery this is actually the protozoal dysentery named as amoebiasis caused by intamoeba histolytica no one can guess from the name of this protozoa int amoeba int and from intestine amoeba it is a protozoa which is causing infection in the intestine histolytica histo means tissues lytica lysis this amoeba is going to infect intestine and then what is going to happen is the tissues will be damaged very simple understanding from the name one can understand if one concentrates well now let's come that how this intermeba histolytica is going to infect intestine and cause the lysis of the intestinal tissues let's get right into it well the food and the drinks that you take if that food or drinks contain Entamoeba histolytica that will enter through your mouth will come towards the stomach then as it reaches the small intestine this cyst which is actually the intamoeba histolytica will start preparing itself for the multiplication or for application so as it reaches the large intestine here multiple copies will be synthesized those multiple copies are actually mobile and they are named as trophozoite so what is going to happen right now here is cyst is going to be converted into trophozoite now these trophozoites are actually responsible to cause damage to the intestine okay so what is going to happen now very simple these trophozoites when they reach the intestine they will cause the infection and the meanwhile that infected person when he's passing the stools that stools will contain mucus and blood in the very initial stages there will be the only mucus okay is it to get worsens then there will be blood also available okay so a time comes when it causes further damage to the intestine in that condition what is going to see in that condition ulcer is seen now in that state what is going to happen then then these trophozoites find their way inside the body then from the intestine they start moving towards the liver lungs and brain if they reach the liver and lungs uh, oftenly okay often time they reach the liver and lung but in a very rare way they also reach the brain and as they reach here they will cause the abscess in the liver lungs and brain 
Now, have you got the way how this amoebiasis is causing infection?